This is our final episode, and I thought it would be a fantastic idea to recap every single thing that we've taught Moira in two weeks. One thing that makes a huge difference when you're working on a project like this is always having the best toys and treats available. Two boxes today, Bark Box for dogs that are not that hard on toys, or Super Chewer for those really tough dogs. Moira, definitely more of a Super Chewer dog. Bark makes the most dynamic dog toys on the market, period. The sea turtle is awesome, super dangly too. You know, some of those dogs like the dangly toys. Different textures, awesome design. Lots of super premium treats. Bree is telling me that if this toy gets destroyed, there's a surprise on the inside. Yes, check it out. I think I will. In the name of dog science, I'm doing this to this poor little sea lion. Oh, because he ate the penguin. So there, ah, well. It's like the penguin has the last laugh. So this is what I mean. BarkBox is super creative, super innovative with dog toys. We love them. And for our super chewer dogs, it's Barkfist in bed. You've got, we got an awesome fried egg, really tough. These are dishwasher safe too. Check out the bacon. These are much, much tougher, tougher toys right here. You get a couple of bags of super premium treats in every box from Bark. We get lots of awesome chews. After all, it's a super chewer box. Get a free Bark box or super chewer box when you sign up for a multi-month plan at superchewer.com slash dog training and barkbox.com slash dog training. I'll have a link below. If you're really serious about training your dog, you really should watch this entire series. But today, I'm gonna to give you an overview now that everything is complete. You'll recall when we first got Moira, she was completely untrained with the exception of sit. She didn't know how to sit. And my goal was to build enough communication with her over the two weeks that I had available so that she would have a basic understanding of how to communicate with people as a whole, at least at a basic level. But it was completely evident on my first day with Moira this was going to be a lofty goal. I had no reason to believe that this was going to be a smooth process. You crazy, I, I will let you hold this bag. You can just set that on the ground. Oh, yeah. A train dog was not this... what we were looking for, True. so there you go. Good. Here, sit. You taught her down, you said? Uh, just sit. Oh, okay, sit. Very good. Oh, she's perfect, she's great. Now going into this project, me and Brie were so excited and I knew there was a ton that I wanted to accomplish, but I also knew that we didn't have forever to accomplish those goals. With that preliminary time that I had initially met Moira, I could tell she was going to be extremely challenging. Good girl, you know how to let go. But I could also tell that she was a very sharp cookie and she would prove me right on that point throughout this series. So on day one, we had her foster mom drop her off and immediately she was all over the furniture. She was obviously very excited. That's why we film. Yeah. Okay, you need to work on your furniture. Uh, jumping, I see. And then after she got settled a little bit, I took her on a walk and things got interesting. Okay, Moira is so worked up. Brie and Inertia are down there, but Moira is like really, really wound up. So you can see we've got a a lot of work to do here. And I knew that Moira had killed a couple of chickens in the past. She had this strong desire to approach birds. Oh my gosh, gosh. Girl, no ma'am, come on over here. So what I need to do is I need to create distance right there. I was definitely concerned about this, but my best hypothesis, so far anyway, was that she was just a dog that had a lot of drive. She liked to chase things, run after them, and yes, bite them. And so she needed some guidance on how to constructively fulfill her inner drive. And that's why the first thing that I decided to teach her was tug of war. Before I go to bed tonight, I'm going to get her a little bit more tired by playing. She's also getting me a little more tired as well. Boy, you gotta watch that bite right there. You wanna be careful when you're teaching an adult dog like this how to play tug of war, because their aim isn't always the best. I really wanted her to understand, yes, you can play vigorously. Yes, you can bite things, certain things that is. And yes, it's gonna be a lot of fun when you interact with me. We had a pretty reasonable first night and Moira did pretty well, but I remember thinking like, holy cow, there is so much to do. What have I done? I have to be totally honest with you. I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed. She has a lot of bad habits that a lot of people don't want to deal with. I mean, this is one of the issues with rescue dogs. Very often they have a history of getting away with things, jumping on people or running after wild animals or anything like that that can be really difficult to manage once the habit has been established. On day two, it was clear I needed to shape up and I needed to do it fast because this dog was going to get out of control if I didn't start giving her structure immediately. Moira's tied to me now. 
Why, you ask? This is why. So much for the tie out, huh? I could not believe how fast Moira went from not understanding the leave it, look at me combo. Leave it. Okay. So she didn't listen to me, to doing a super impressive version of Leave It and Look At Me in her first training session. Leave it, look at me, yes. That was a magic moment right there. This was further illustrating how smart and sharp this dog really is. If you haven't taught your dog the Leave It, Look At Me combo, do it. It is so fun and so practical for other areas of teaching them. Training a dog like Moira while also producing a series and currently filming a series is definitely a couple of full-time jobs, believe it or not. So it was really important that we were able to work in downtime for Moira while Bree and I did our day job. Right now we are previewing a video, making notes, while also you may notice filming a video. <laughs> Two series at once. We're so productive. It's funny because you're wearing the same outfit. So it's like Zach in a red hoodie, Zach in a red hoodie and a cam over there. Real life Zach still in his red hoodie. I cannot even handle all the universes that are touching right now simultaneously. It's messing with my head. Looks like she found a toy to play with. See, I knew she'd be okay. And that's something we're really trying to do with these series moving forward. Really show you what training a dog is like in day-to-day -day life not just having a dedicated training lesson and moving on to the next one. And I was so anxious to get into training Moira, but she obviously had some other leftover puppy habits that really had to be dealt with. And probably the most significant of those that was immediately apparent is that she would bite all of the time. I mean, those puppy teeth are long gone. Those are actual grown up German Shepherd dog teeth. This is exactly the kind of behavior that can scare a lot of people. So even though this hurts, it is just play biting but a German Shepherd, even play biting hard, can still have unwanted consequences. So many rescues have this issue of adult puppy biting because they don't always have someone who is there to show them exactly the right things to bite on. So with Moira, I really focused on redirecting that desire to play into something more productive, like a training session or maybe even tug of war, or some type of game, which also had the added benefit of being able to show her how to better interact with people. I want to let her know biting is okay, but only only with permission and only with approved items. I immediately got to work on teaching Moira how to sit, lie down, and stand up. This basic training is something that you can teach a dog really quickly. It's also another great way to redirect their puppy energy when they start biting on you. When she gets it, she really gets it. And night two was a lot rockier with Moira than the first night. So she was definitely more restless. And I also knew I was really throwing a lot at her in terms of asking her to learn new things, given that we have such a limited amount of time together. I'm gonna try one more thing. I'm just gonna ignore her for five straight minutes. And if after five minutes she's still feeling frantic, I'll probably adjust my strategy, let her sleep on the tie out next to me where she has a little bit more room, but I don't want her to continue to stress though. I mean, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, it's because a crate can often make it easier to manage a dog. And I like to use really oversized crates. So for a crate, this is pretty big, but the more and more that I'm watching her, the more I'm realizing that a crate really might not be for her. I just let her out, so I don't think she has to relieve herself. Five minutes can seem like an eternity when you're timing things like this. All right, I'm gonna call it and we're gonna tie her out. But part of training a dog is having a comfortable, well-rested dog too. And Moira just was so at ease when she got up on the mattress and laid down next to me. So I committed the ultimate dog trainer sin and had her sleep next to me in my bed for the next couple of nights. Number one dog training channel on YouTube, right here. And over the next several days, I would discover that she had some issues with the crate. So I graduated her to a safe area for her to be in that wasn't quite as enclosed as a crate. And she did really well with that. Part of being a good trainer to your dog and good teacher to them is being flexible and always being able to change your game plan. Moira is throwing so many curveballs at us. I'm having to change protocol all over the place to adapt to her. Of course, overnight wasn't our only issue. Moira did surprise me with some rather robust barking outbursts in her first few days with us, even if I still was in my pajamas. I don't want to cave by just going over there. This is really like what we call demand barking. Girl, I have to wait for a fraction of quiet and then I'm gonna go acknowledge the quiet. Yes, fraction of quiet, quiet. 
Good girl, okay. The jumping is another thing we've got to work on. Yes, good girl. So, gonna reward the quiet there. Good girl. <laughs> That's how I looked? Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Of course, I wanted to make sure to work with her extensively on one of the most important skills that every dog should know, stay. And so we really broke down stay into three categories. Stay for a period of time, sit, good. You can see her focus is good. Let me, let me just test, look at me, look at me. Yes, good. Took her a second there, but that's good. I just wanted to measure. Stay while we walk away. But I'm gonna walk away, then I'm gonna come back. Here. See how her attention was waning there? Good girl, stay. Walking away. Notice how I'm not releasing her from the stay over here. She's doing really well with this. Very good. I'm coming over here, now I'm gonna say, okay, come on. Yes. Good. And then stay while distracted, which was definitely easier said than done with Moira. She's a very distractible dog. Let go, easy, sit, stay. She's looking, stay. Look at me. Yes, okay, good girl, very good. In that example, you could see how she held her stay while something she really wants was nearby. But did you also notice how delicate I was? I didn't make the distraction super crazy. We wanna work up to that. So to this point, we've seen Moira display a number of different issues from anxiety in her crate, to pulling and lunging on her leash, to barking outbursts and more. There's one absolutely critical component to dogs who behave like Moira. And without it, you have almost no hope of having a well-behaved dog. And that component is exercise. Well, exercise that involves interacting with a person. And Moira loves to play. So again, channeling that desire to play into a polished, game of fetch is a game changer for her. So I'm gonna run around a little bit here, see if she comes towards me. <laughs> good, and I'm gonna, she backed away a little, but I'm gonna hold the ball. Let go, it was a really good let go. Yes, since I said yes, I'm gonna follow it up with a reward. Good girl, yeah, what? And you can see my energy caused her to come bolt towards me, yes. This is also a very fun way to solidify come when called. And obviously when a dog loves playing fetch this much, I can't help but check in to see how they like Frisbee. The really cool thing about teaching dogs how to play like this, besides getting their energy out on your terms and schedule, is that you get your dog in an amazing mood so you can actually start to practice their everyday obedience training while they're in that optimistic, fun frame of mind. Let me throw in a sit. Sit. Yes, good. So now she had fun because she took direction from me, you can see how this can really spiral in a good way for your training. Yes! I mean, getting your dog to listen to you when they're in that excited mindset can be very powerful. And of course, for your dog to be really proficient at fetch, they have to have a very good let go. Clearly, that was something that Moira and I needed to practice a little bit more. Yes! Good girl. You can see she's really getting it here. It was also becoming more evident that Moira was more of a physical train in that she was just a rough and tumble dog. You might notice with Moira, with her being so energetic and strong, I'm a bit more physical with her than I have to be with other dogs. I have to block her from jumping on me or getting at my face. I'm really hoping to make it out of this series without a broken nose, I hope. I've been watching Cobra Kai, so I can like block. A little while later, we were outside and a dog appeared behind our yard and surprised all of us. This was Moira's most significant reaction to date. And since the dog was moving by, I did my best to just hold my ground and try not to drag Moira away, which I think could have frustrated her even more, making this issue even worse. It was clear we had some very significant issues here that we needed to work on with Moira. Aside from some of these more extreme reactions to other dogs, jumping on and scaring away potential adopters was another one of Moira's significant issues. So we got to work on that right away. So generally when I'm teaching a dog how not to jump on someone, I'll teach them how to not jump on me first and then later start working with them on not jumping on other people. Cause they really are different issues, aren't they? Okay, girl, see what I'm saying? She just gets, she's like, give me that food. Yes. The fact that she offered to sit right there means I'm gonna, okay, no. girl. All right, sit, yes. This is also a great time to use their meal. Uh-uh, 
See there, she made no contact. You gotta watch them. It's a great time to use her meal uh, for training. I wanna intercept her before the jumping. Sit. Yes. And the next day, we officially started Moira's leash training session, albeit indoors. And even there, it was clear, I'm gonna have a tough time here. Oh, see? Look at that, she's pulling towards the toy. If that was a dog, she would be like, I'm not paying attention to you, I'm paying attention to that. I'm trying to guide her away from the distraction. And man, this is going to take longer than two weeks. If she can't leave that toy burrito alone, there's virtually no chance she's going to disregard a dog anywhere within 50 yards of her. I've decided to upgrade my treat here to real chicken. Do you want this? Look at that. It can be a little frustrating when you're trying to teach your dog how to leave a toy alone for a leash training session like this, but I mean, real chicken. You want this instead? Putting it right at her nose, look at that. She's saying, I would rather play with this toy than eat that chicken. The fact that Moira turned down real chicken right at her nose in favor of that toy is a pretty big deal. On one hand, she gets so focused on something that it's hard to get her attention on me even when I have a good currency, but it also tells me that, okay, hey, I can probably use that toy to motivate her to do a variety of different things moving forward. Her true personality was really beginning to emerge. We started to see more instances of demand barking as well as her starting to get very interested in my shoes. My new classic Reeboks. Why is this on the floor? You can't have these, that would be tragic. Fortunately, my shoes made it out alive. Around this time, she was also making a lot of progress when it came to settling down inside the house. So that was a win. Now, after several days of really focusing on these fundamental skills, it was time to take our training out into the real world and start implementing some of these skills. So the first place I took Moira was to a very unpopulated public area, but there wasn't much around and she nailed it. She did pretty awesome. She's very interested in people. There's someone crossing the road over here and she's giving them a look, which is fine, but let me practice getting her attention while she's mildly distracted by someone in the distance. Moira. Here, look at me. Yes. Good. Here. Yes. Good. And okay. Good. And now I'm gonna let her satisfy her curiosity for a minute. And because she was doing so well, I was like, all right, let's move on to our second location, which has a slightly higher concentration of dogs and people in the distance. And as soon as we got there, it was clear I was gonna have to be very focused and very disciplined about training Moira. I mean, that dog is very far away and Moira is already over the threshold. Before this gets any worse, I'm gonna help her out by moving her farther away from the dog. And this is good. She doesn't need much coaxing to come along with me when the dog is that far away. That's definitely a plus since we have a lot to work on here. And here's another dog already that has walked into Moira's detection zone. And it's more of the same. She's definitely not willing to voluntarily give me her attention if she can see a dog at all. Even when I call Moira's name and I ask her to sit, she's completely non-compliant. I mean, Moira became very reactive to people and dogs and basically anything she could see anywhere. So we were in over our head here. And so then the next day I was like, all right, we've got to get really serious, not only about her basic training here, but we also need to focus on this reactivity every moment that we can while we're together. But I don't have the luxury of only focusing on that. So we decided to focus our training efforts on the field right behind my house where I can control the environment pretty well and I've got terrific visibility so I can see dogs and distractions coming and going. Nonetheless, this training session and the next few would still be very rocky. I would definitely encounter some significant outbursts from Moira. We have a couple of dogs coming here. Oh, go get it. Moira can't focus on me, toys, treats, or anything else if she detects a dog anywhere on planet Earth. The other dog's quite excited as well, so I wanna make sure I have a good grip on her. I wanna keep full control. When you're doing early leash training sessions with a dog like this, the process can be very bumpy to say the least. It's hard to keep your dog's sustained attention at times for sure. You can see me trying here and failing miserably at times, but I'm not gonna give up. But let me be clear, I am making a sincere effort to minimize these outbursts. And I'm doing that by being very far away from potential triggers that Moira can see. I'm gonna try and create some distance here. Let's go, come on girl. Ooh. I mean, some dogs are more sensitive than others, but Moira is particularly sensitive whenever she sees a dog. In between our outings to work on Moira's reactivity, we had a lot of other things to work on too. I focused on getting her more comfortable with some basic grooming practices, and there were some bumps in the road. Yes, uh, oh boy, okay. 
sit. She did not like that at all. But training is all about being flexible, so we shifted our game plan, and Moira did incredible. So here we're counter conditioning her, like getting her to be more tolerant of something that she typically isn't. And she's getting a good experience of eating that peanut butter at the same time. And she's like, hey, I don't mind this so much, so we'll cater our approach to her. Because her biting and jumping still needed some work, I really wanted to diligently focus on resolving that too. Oh, this is gonna be crazy. You wanna go say hi? Let's go say hi. Good. Okay, so right there, that's why we have them on leash. Say hi. Hey, little girl. Good girl. Okay, come. See that? So we're interrupting the behavior before it occurs. The next day was just magical. Well, mostly. At this point, I really felt like, I mean, me and Moira were starting to connect and understand one another and had some really solid basic communication. So as you'll remember, one of her big issues was being tempted by birds. So I figured we would do some training around birds. Lots and lots of birds. I mean, if I remember correctly, she had a little bit of a tough time at first, but for the most part, she showed extreme focus in the presence of thousands, like literally thousands of different birds. Let's see how all of her steps of fetch are looking. Interest in toy, check, that's good. Let go, let go. Okay, better than it was, sit, stay. Okay, yes, go. Good girl, chasing it. Returning it in a straight line, let's see. Come on. Yes, good. Eagerly lets go and awaits the next throw. Let's find out. Let go. Stay. Eagerly awaits the next throw for sure. Okay. So I'm really satisfied that my strategy here was working of teaching her to run and chase after something and bite it and bring it back to me, AKA fetch, was really satisfying that desire to play and interact with her world. I mean, Moira was just firing on all cylinders and it was at that moment where I was like, we are turning this corner. That is just incredible. She is looking so good on heel. I love the way a German Shepherd looks when they heal. But I would be reminded that progress when training a dog is very rarely linear. After what had been an enormously successful day of training, Moira had her single worst outburst in my custody to date. All right, Moira, no ma'am. Come here. Come on. Back here, let's go. And of course, I want to take responsibility. It was my own fault for moving too quickly and putting her too close to other dogs. It goes to show that just when you think you're having a major breakthrough, dog training really does keep you humble. And just like I talk about in my books, link below, and throughout my YouTube videos, you always have to be prepared to take a step back whenever the situation dictates. So the next day, it was off to try and solidify Moira's obedience when she sees other dogs. So you can see straight away, we've got some dogs here. <coughs> Enough. Uh -uh, that's enough. So my overall strategy here was basically to manage her should she become overwhelmed when in the presence of another dog, though ideally I'm trying to prevent that from happening at all from this point forward. And I was definitely not perfect at that. Episode nine though was really a breakthrough day. It's like she really seemed to start to understand what we're going for here. She started paying attention to me a lot more reliably when she would see other dogs. Moira, come. Yes, much better, very good. On that day, she made some incredible leaps forward on her obedience. She did her longest ever stay, which was impressive to watch. Okay, come. Yeah, I love that, look at that sprint. Her heel was starting to come together, something we had just basically started on. Moira also had her first bath with me, which is always an interesting experience. We had our ups and downs, and bottom line, she did get pretty clean, and neither one of us were too traumatized in the process. When you're working with a reactive dog like Moira, you're looking for sometimes tiny examples of success. Even those tiny successes are important to celebrate, though. But the success that Moira had on this next day was just huge, and it was so satisfying to see this. We were just shooting some photos with Moira and both of us noticed, holy cow, there's a dog coming and we know how delicate she can be with dogs. So I quickly escorted her down here and a beautiful thing happened. I was able to keep her attention almost exclusively on the ball, playing fetch with that dog at, by her standards, extremely close range. She still showed a lot of interest, but I was able to get her back, which was the really encouraging thing to me. There's hope, Moira, you can do this. It's hard to resist a barking dog, I understand. She's running around from excitement. Let me see if I can get her back on the ball. 
There we go. I'm not insisting on perfection. I'm just trying to get her attention loosely on me right now because we know she's really excited. You can hear the dog barking still there. She's still excited about the dog, but she's still picking that ball up. So it's a really effective currency. And even though she's in and out right now, they're in and out before they're all in. But that's fine for now. That's where you start. And that's the goal of this series, to give you realistic places to start, not to try and make me look good like I can train a dog like a wizard, but to really just show you the actual steps I go through to try to get a dog compliant over a more extended period of time. And keep in mind, my overall goal with this project is to make sure Moira is as prepared as humanly possible for her new home. So that also means just general good behavior in the house, like not stealing things and how to just chill out and relax sometimes. Plus, training sessions like this always help deepen your mutual communication with your dog, as evidenced by how hard Moira tried to convince me that she really didn't have to leave that chicken alone. I think this is our first actual argument as a dog and trainer team. And you can't have it, really. The, no, I'm sorry. Here, come on, over here, leave it. Come. Nope, come. Good girl, yes, sit. On my last day of training Moira, I could not have been more proud. I mean, she was listening to her basics like sit, stay, come, and heal. She showed incredible restraint with other dogs very close by. Look at this loose leash right now, it's pretty good. So this is really impressive. Here, come on, good girl. <laughs> and I was satisfied that there was a strong foundation in place for her new mom to take over. I took Moira on one last walk with just me and her, and she did not have a single outburst on our entire walk. Moira, you're going home with your new mom today. I've really enjoyed working with you. I'm going to miss you tremendously. You're a very special dog. Do you think she can understand any of this? She's wonderful. Very smart girl. Really curious about her world. Not one outburst on our final walk. Not one. I'm proud of her. Now, I don't want to make this look like, oh, Moira will never have another outburst again. I think it's still probably going to take several more months of doing a lot of repetitive training as we've done over the last several episodes of this series. And that's okay. Real behavior change takes time. There's no way to skip over life experience for our dogs. This series was really focused on those beginning steps that you need to take so that you and Moira's new family could hopefully learn where you can start to get traction on a complex issue like this. I'm so proud of Moira, and this is definitely going to be my favorite moment of the entire series. You've been waiting for it. I'd like to introduce you to Moira's new mom, Arena. Hi, I'm Arena. I'm going to be Moira's new mom. I met Moira a few weeks ago, and I wanted to be considered for adopting her. And since this project began with Zach, I've been accepted. I've been searching for a dog for a while and, of course, fall in love with every single dog. But when I saw her, I fell extra in love. And I'm not planning on getting any other pets for now. As far as training, it would be nice if she could understand basic skills. Things like sit and stay and how to come and not pull on her leash. I understand she's reactive to other dogs, so I'm hoping to work on that over time. I know that Moira has to get used to working with me and that none of these skills will stick unless I continue to work with her. But I'm really excited that she's had this time with Zach. Once Arena and Moira got united, I went over the things that we taught Moira. Of course, Moira was so excited to see Arena that she could hardly contain herself. There's always a learning curve when it comes to teaching a dog to interact with a specific individual, but I think they're going to have plenty of time to get to know each other better. Sit. Good job. Stay. Mm -hmm. Stay. Now look at me. Now look at me. And then, okay, come to me. Okay, come. Perfect. Good girl. Happy with that. It. We're working on hand signal with down, so no treat, no lure. Uh -huh. Here, look at me. Up, stand, stay. Good, so sit down and stand are the three positions we've been working on with her. It was really a lot of fun to help them work together for the first time. Arena found a really great dog, and Moira was so lucky to be able to find such a committed person. I can tell these two are going to be an awesome team. This was a fantastic experience, and you guys really seem to love it. And I can't wait to show you the next dog we're featuring, because you're going to love him too. All of you can get a free Super Chewer box, Bark Box, or both when you sign up for a multi-month subscription. And if you want all of the information in this series and so much more, get my book, Guide to a Well-Behaved Dog. Be the first to know every new dog I'm working with by following us on Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook too. We'll see you in episode one of our next series.